Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks. In this channel, we are going to discuss about public cloud design problem statement and their related solution. We are going to talk about two public cloud vendors, one is AWS, second is Microsoft Azure. So today's problem statement, how to achieve cloud-based ETL or ELT and data integration functionalities. So the solution which has been provided by Microsoft Azure is very straightforward that is Azure Data Factory and with AWS you will find AWS Glue. So let's try to understand what is ETL. ETL means extract, transform and load. When we say extract that means you have a source from where you want to extract the data. So the source can be an existing database under or a legacy system. It could be cloud, hybrid or on-premise environment, sales and marketing application, mobile de devices and apps, CRM system, data storage platform, data warehouses and analytics tool. So from these systems, you will extract the data. Second, the transformation. So when we say transformation, that means you will have your raw data with which you are going to cleansing, cleansing the data. That means you, you are going to remove the inconsistencies and missing values in the data or result. And standardization, that means you are formatting the rules which are applied to the data set. Then deduplications, de de that means redundant data is excluded or discarded. When we say verification, that means unusual data is removed and anomalies are flagged. And sorting, that means data is organized according to the type. And other tasks like any additional or optional rule or enrichment that you want to do, that also you can do. That means you are transforming your raw data to a standard format. And then the last part is loading. Once the transformation is done, then you want to load it to a system, destination system. So there are two type of loading which is currently supported. One is full loading, second is incremental loading. When we say full loading, that means everything that comes from the transformation assembly line goes into new and unique records in the data warehouse. Though there may be times this is useful for research purpose, full loading produces data sets that grow exponentially and can quickly become difficult to maintain. So please note this point. In full loading, this could be the demerit. With incremental loading, a less comprehensive but more manageable approach is incremental loading. Incremental loading compares incoming data with what's are already on hand and only produces additional record if new and unique transformation or information is found. This is architecture allows uh, this architecture allows smaller, less expensive data warehouses to maintain and manage business intelligence. So this is the best benefit of incremental loading. Now, as I have mentioned ETL and ELT, let's try to understand what are the what is the difference between ETL and ELT. When we say ETL, that means extract, transform and load. And when we say ELT, that means extract and load and then transform. That means you will load your data, the raw data directly to your data warehouse and then based on your need, slowly you can transform it. So there are merits and demerits for both the scenario. It totally depends upon your use case and your demand. Based on that, you can choose which approach to be useful for your uh, situation. Now, let's try to understand. To achieve the ETL and data integration mechanism, how Azure Data Factory is going to help? But before that, let's try to understand Azure Data Factory base concept. So Azure Data Factory is a managed cloud service that's built for this complex hybrid extract, transform and load, extract, load and transform and data integration. We will be discussing about it in detail. But it also creates a data driven, driven workflows for orchestrating data movement and transforming data at scale. That means from your source to destination you can transform your data. Let's try to understand a simple scenario. So you have a retail website where you are selling your multiple dresses in the website. You want to observe which dress are getting clicked more or getting visited more. So 
for each click for each event you want to capture the data so that can, data can be captured from the event driven mechanism and you can store it in the raw format in your database in your current database or in your data store it could be your on premise system it could be your mobile app or sql database whatever now this is a raw data so what you want to do you want to read this raw data you want to transform it and you want to structure it so that you can find out a pattern which are all dresses are clicked more from which are all location what type of age group people are trying to achieve it so that you can create a pattern and you can create a you know business offer for those people who are trying to visit it so that's how a etl mechanism work so you'll extract it you'll enrich it with the you know with your need and you will analyze it and you can understand what are all data and what are all things are getting visited or getting in used by multiple system and based on that you will publish it and based on that you can create an action so this is how a data etl workflow works so here as you can see the data source could be anything then it comes the ingest state ingest state means you will ingest the, this data to your data databases then you will prepare it then you will transform it where you will enrich it you will analyze it and you will make it structure then you will publish it and somebody will consume it and you can prepare a pattern and you can use it so cloud based data integration service that allows you to create data driven workflows in the cloud organizing and automating data movement and transformation this is the basic definition of azure data factory so as you can see here so there are multiple phases so first is extract where you have your unstructured data so azure data factory will extract it it, it could be in csv format or it could be in raw format whatever and then you will transform it you will map the unstructured data to a structural format and then you load it so this is the standard flow of azure data factory now let's try to understand what are all different components that are currently available with azure data factory components so first one is pipeline second is activities data sets linked services data flows and integration runtime let's try to understand what is a pipeline a pipeline is a logical group of activities that performs on a, a unit of work that means you have certain set of activities and activities defines an action to be performed on your data that means it could be copy activities it could be transform activities this type of activities are known as activities and pipeline works over the activities and then another component is mapping data flows like create and manage your graphs of data transformation logic that you can use to transform any size of data then the important part comes data sets data sets represents the data structure within the data stores so when you store the data that means there could be a structure which has been followed so that is what a data sets then the link services the link services are nothing but the connection strings which define the connection information that is needed for data factory to connect to external resources okay so data factory is connecting to your sql database or your storage account or you know in your any source so that are linked to this services this services from data factory via the linked services now the integration runtime this is one of the important part an integration runtime is the compute infrastructure that azure data factory uses to provide the follow uh, the uh, following data integration capabilities across different network environment that means you have multiple network environment and you want to do uh, certain network activities or data activities via integration runtime you can do that then the triggers the triggers that determines when a pipeline execution needs to be kicked off when a pipeline will be started that time a trigger can be used then the parameters parameters are the key value pair defined in the pipeline and the control flow is an orchestration of the pipeline like you can orchestrate multiple pipeline via the control flow so these are all basic components which has been used by the data factory now let's try to understand the relationship between the component so let's start from the right side so you have your pipeline you have a schedule monitor and manage then this pipeline works over the activities the activities could be copy activities or some other activities as well so pipeline works on the activities activities consumes the data set which has been the raw data set which has been created from the source 
and then it also after consuming the data set it produces the structured data and again it stored into the second data set and the second data sets uh, and the data sets are getting linked to the uh, uh, related services like your storage account or SQL database via the linked services. So activities talk to the data sets and also activities talk to the linked services and data sets uh, uh, can use the linked services to collect the data. That's how the flow work. Pipeline uses activities, activities uses data sets, data sets uses linked services to consume the data and the vice versa will also give you the result. This is how the components of the data factory are linked to each other. Now the pricing part is the important part. If you create a data factory, you do not have to pay for it until unless you use the feature of the data factory like pipeline layout and execution of data factory that cost you. Data flow execution and debugging that also cost you. Data factory operation that also cost you. You can find all this information in the pricing page of a Microsoft uh, data factory. Uh, you will find this information. You can go through it. I have collected all this information by following these documents. You can find these documents in the video uh, link or in, in the video description. Uh, if you like the video, then don't forget to uh, like it. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and keep commenting and keep reading. Uh, all the best with Data Factory.